What's happening guys, Keith here with your Slammiversary 2018 review video. So the pay-per-view finished up a little while ago and Impact hit it out of the park. What an overall fantastic show. Top to bottom, they gave every match the time it deserved. Nothing felt like it was a throwaway, just overall a fantastic show. Um, easily worth the $40, uh, one of the best pay-per-views I've seen in quite some time. Um, and I watch a lot of wrestling. Uh, so, original thoughts, we noticed that the stage is a little different, um, the entrance ramp goes all the way up to the ring apron, so that was a cool look, um, and the hard cam was actually positioned a little differently, I don't know if it was the setup where they had to do it this way, but it was actually positioned across from the entrance ramp, uh, kind of up a little higher facing down at the ring, but I thought it was good, I, at no point in the night did I feel like it was weird or anything to that matter. It was focusing completely on what was going on in the ring. You didn't even notice the crowd on the outside. So I kind of liked it. Um, we opened the mat the show with the match that I believed should have opened the show, and that was a fatal four-way. Um, Rich Swan was unable to compete, so he was replaced with Petey Williams. So this was Petey Williams versus Johnny Impact versus Phoenix versus Taiji Ishimori. Um, and this match was exactly what was expected. A lot of high flying, a lot of great spots. I mean, we started the show off with Impact Wrestling Chance, um, you know, all these guys Chance, um, this is Impact. It, it was just a phenomenal start to the show. Everybody was super hot for the match. And, you know, each competitor kind of had their own time to show off their skills. Um, oh, like I said, it was just a, a great way to open the show. Uh, Johnny Impact does indeed get the win. Um, Phoenix had Petey set up in the muscle buster position. Impact hit Phoenix with a super kick, and he hit Starship Pain for the victory. So, much like everybody thought, Johnny Impact did go over here. I actually predicted every match right, which was a good thing because it was who I thought should win. Not, you know, it didn't feel like they were definitely going to win, but who I thought was the better person to win. Oh, uh, we go backstage, and the and King is with the OGs. Uh, the sound was a little off here. I don't know uh, if they were just too far away or what the deal was, but so I wasn't able to hear everything that was said. But King did say that when we win, we will burn the LAX name and piss on the ashes. So for our second match of the evening, we have our first knockouts match, and that was Tessa versus Allie. Uh, this was probably Allie's best match in the company that I've seen. Um, I don't know if you guys, if there is a match that was better than this one that she put on, I'd like to know. Um, but she looked great. Tessa looked great. Both women put on a hell of a show. They tore the house down in this match. Um, trash talking in the ring, super intense. They start off, action goes right to the outside. Uh, Allie hits, uh, uh, twisting crossbody off the apron. I think Tessa hit a suicide dive. They go back in the ring. Tessa controlled for a while. Uh, Tessa eventually gets knocked to the outside. Allie hits an Alley Valley driver. Uh, both women get back in the ring. They go back and forth for a bit. Tessa goes up top, hits a top rope Hurricane Rana. I think she got a near fall on that one. Then she goes for a senton off the top rope. Allie moves out of the way. Um... Allie hits a code breaker. Tessa rolls to the outside. Then they go back in. They trade near falls. Allie sets up for the Alley Valley driver again. Tessa reverses it, hits the hammerlock DDT, and gets the victory. So her first big victory in the company. And like a lot of us said, we expected Tessa to win this, and she did. But I definitely give Allie credit. She put on a great match. Uh, we go backstage, and Alicia interviews Moose. Uh, he says... All his hard work will pay off for him tonight, and he will leave with the championship. So our third match of the evening is the House of Hardcore match with Tommy Dreamer versus Eddie Edwards. Um, I was a little disappointed to see Eddie Edwards come out all clean-shaven and everything. He should have had a beard and all scruffy looking. But this match was exactly what we expected. There was blood like Eddie said there was going to be. Uh, they start out right away beating the crap out of each other. They go right to the outside. Garbage can come out. Lids, garbage can lids come out, I think. Uh, cookie sheets. Tommy even took a fan's beer can and hit Eddie in the head with it. 
Staple Gun came out. They teased it back and forth for a bit. Eventually, Tommy did hit Eddie in the face or in the forehead with the Staple Gun. Um, Tommy pulled out the ECW title from underneath the ring and hit Eddie in the face with that. Uh, Kendo Sticks came out. Tommy put Eddie through two standing chairs side by side with a Spicoli driver off the top rope. Um, this is when Tommy brings out a table, puts it in the ring, gets lighter fluid. The crowd was going ape shit for this. Unfortunately, Eddie hits Sam, uh, Sammy, Tommy with a low blow, then hits a DDT, hits him with a boss knee party into a chair, and Eddie picks up the win. Uh, after the match, Eddie's kind of losing control of himself. He's crying and breaking down. Alicia comes out. At this point, Tommy's feeling bad. He extends his hand. Alicia makes Eddie shake his hand. The two shake hands, and Tommy leaves, and Eddie is still broken down in the ring. Uh, Tommy did hand Eddie the kendo stick, almost like he was passing the torch, so to speak. I think that's what Callis and Josh Matthews had said, but we will see. I'm sure Eddie Edwards is going to continue to... Go somewhere with this character. He's not uh, quite right just yet. Uh, we go backstage and Seidel cuts another good promo, basically saying that he's going to be leaving with the X Division Championship. He uh, he really believes this third eye stuff. He can he can say that. And that was our next match of the evening, the X Division Championship with Matt Seidel defending against Brian Cage. I did not expect this match to be this good. Um, very competitive. This was Matt Seidel's, one of his best showings because just the countering that was going on in the match, it was just back and forth. I mean, Cage started off strong. Seidel started playing some mind games, going underneath the ring. He was able to get some offensive on that end. Um, Seidel hits a standing moonsault. Cage just no-sells it, gets up. Beats the crap out of them. They go back and forth. Like I said, they were countering everything. Uh, Seidel even reversed a drill claw twice. Uh, once for with a Hurricane Rana. Um, Seidel went up top for a shooting star press. However, coming down, I don't, I don't know if this was meant to look this way, but Seidel came down, hit his feet on the rope like he was too close. Um, but at the same time, Brian Cage had his feet up, so I don't know which spot was actually supposed to happen. But uh, he did not land very pretty. Uh, Cage gets him up, hits him with the drill claw. That's it. New X Division champion, Brian Cage. Like I said, this is a fantastic showing from both men. Uh, really enjoyable match. Very competitive. A lot more competitive than I expected. Another match the crowd was super into. Um, then we go backstage, and Alicia is interviewing Austin Aries. He says that Moose's dreams are his reality, and he is going to walk out still Impact Champion. Um, up next, we have the Knockouts Championship match with Sue Young defending against Madison Rain. Uh, this was probably the match that people were least looking forward to. Um, I mean, this was all built up on backstage segments, basically. That was the only way that people got in... Uh, involved in this match or i should say uh invested in the match which is really what it did for me but uh i mean th that's kind of the way they booked this this was all character based for sue young um this was pr the shortest match on the card i believe and um probably I, I wouldn't say it's the worst match but definitely um i guess the worst match on the card uh but so of course sue young comes out with the undead brides however she is Carried out in a coffin. Um, the two start off fighting right away on the ramp. Madison gets control early. Bridesmaids start to get involved. Madison's able to get some offense. She hits a Hurricane Rana on the outside. Action goes in the ring. Su Young controls. Uh, one of the bridesmaids get up on the apron, hold Madison Rain back. Su Young goes for the red miss. Madison Rain ducks, hits one of the bridesmaids. Uh, we get a couple near falls. Madison. I think she hits the uh, the cutter, and the, I forget what uh, the other move she hit. Uh, but she sets up for the cross reign. But at this point, Sue Young's able to lock the mandible claw in, and eventually Madison passes out, and Sue Young retains the title. Um, it, it was a really good ending sequence. I like that, the way they did it. Um, the correct winner won, and uh, after the match, Sue Young puts... 
Madison Rain in the coffin and the undead bridesmaids drag it away. So it was good for what it was. Um, entertaining, that's for sure. So we go backstage and LAX is trying to figure out a plan. Conan basically does what he does, rallies the troops, and they are ready to go. And that is our next match, the 5150 Street Fight with LAX versus the OGs for the tag team titles. Um, this match was insane. Uh, LAX got the upper hand right away. They fly to the outside. Uh, I think Santana hit probably a plancha over the top or a suicide dive. Tables go in the ring. All the weapons go in the ring. They trade blows back and forth. The OGs get the upper hand. King throws Drano into the ring, which Don Callis said, I've never seen that before. Um, but this was just a hell of a fight. Lots of blood. Um, Santana was bleeding from multiple spots, his wrist, his head. Um, ladder comes in the ring. Uh, Hernandez gets thrown on top of that. They double team him there. LAX hits the street sweeper on homicide. They almost get the victory. However, Hernandez pulls the referee out. Santana gets put through a table on the outside. Um, inside the ring... Ortiz puts Homicide through a table. Hernandez hits a border toss on Ortiz through another table that's set up. Uh, Santana comes in. He takes out Hernandez. Santana and Homicide go shot for shot. Conan throws tax into the ring. Santana slams Homicide onto the tax. And then he hits a frog splash onto the tax. And they retain the titles. Um, like I said, this was just crazy. The crowd was super into this one as well. Um, after the match, King attacks Conan. Actually, he takes, I don't know what he had, some sort of bag, uh, almost like a f slapjack, um, like Stevie Ray used to carry around. And he beat all three members of LAX. And then the OGs beat down Conan at this point, And then they take the tag titles and spray OG on them. So this war is far from over. Let's see what else we got. Oh. We have a, pro, a promo backstage by Sammy Callahan, and he is uh, talking about how pissed he is that the fans all voted that he was going to lose on Twitter polls, and he says nobody is giving him a chance, but he is going to unmask Pentagon tonight. And that match is up next, and this was just as crazy as we all expected. Um, they start off shot for shot. Pentagon hits a sling blade. They go to the outside. They battle back and forth. Pentagon goes for a suicide dive. Sammy Callahan sticks a chair up. Penta goes into it. Sammy starts throwing chairs into the ring. He brings out some railroad spikes. He goes into the ring, starts ripping Pentagon's mask. Railroad spikes to the head. Then the two go back and forth with railroad spikes. Um, Pentagon gets tied to the ropes by his mask. Callahan goes to get the bat. Pentagon frees himself. Then uh, then they spike each other some more. Um, they got chairs shot for shot. Chris Brothers come out. Of course, there was going to be some sort of shenanigans. However, they are both taken out by Pentagon with the chair. Both of them were sporting uh, braces on their arms, so that was good. I like continuity there since that's what happened on this past episode of Impact with Pentagon breaking both their arms backstage. Um... At this point, with Pentagon distracted, Callahan gets some powder, throws it into Pentagon's face. He goes after the referee, thinking it's Callahan, so he breaks his arm. Um, at this point, Pentagon hits the Pentagon driver on Callahan after he gets his vision back. Of course, no referee there to count it. Uh, Callahan hits a pile driver on a chair that was laying in the ring. Second referee comes down, counts a near fall, um, Callahan then sets up four chairs in the ring. He gets put through that with a Pentagon, uh, with a package pile driver. Near fall there. Callahan kicks out. Crowd is going absolutely apeshit. They were chanting asshole at Callahan throughout the whole match. Um, at this point, Pentagon breaks Callahan's arm, and he hits another package pile driver finally for the victory. Um, the Chris brothers obviously come out and attack Pentagon as, uh, as they were going to, as 
Callahan was being set up to get his head shaved. Sammy tries to escape. He runs to the back. However, he is met with Phoenix and a bunch of security guards at the ramp. Security guards go take care of the Chris brothers in the ring. Phoenix and Pentagon hold Sammy Callahan down and shave his head on the stage. Just what a crazy match. And and that was the thing. Like There was three matches with blood in it, but these feuds were so intense that it was necessary almost. So, like I said, everything was booked really well. Um, then we find out that Bound for Glory will take place on October 14th in the Melrose Ballroom in New York. Uh, there was speculation that it was going to take place in November in Vegas. However, I guess they're going to do three set, three days of taping then, maybe another pay-per-view. Time will tell. We will see. And that brings us to the main event of Austin Aries versus Moose. Uh, they went this about this a little differently as we saw no... Uh, confrontation between the or I should know in-ring action between the two men leading up to Slammiversary so uh, this was cool it was different uh, we did not see D'Angelo Williams uh, Aries has said during his promo earlier on that he had him taken care of so I mean Curtis Granderson was at ringside with the title as the title holder uh, this match was definitely better than I had anticipated um, just you know power versus speed here uh, the two went back and forth for a while. Action went to the outside. Uh, Aries gets thrown into the guardrail. Moose ends up going after Aries, but he himself goes over the guardrail into the first row. They both had people clear out of their seats. Um, they go back into the ring. Aries is getting his ass beat. Get a couple near falls. They go back and forth. Moose goes for a spear. Aries reverses it into a last chancery. Um, Moose is able to get to the ropes at that point. Aries hits a Death Valley driver on the apron on the outside. Um, and then he's able to hit a suicide dive. Uh, Moose is able to get control outside the ring. He swings Aries into the guardrail. Um, they go back in the ring. Moose goes for another spear. However, Aries pulls the referee in front of him. Aries hits a low blow on Moose. Moose goes, uh, or sorry, Aries goes for a brain buster. However, Moose counters it. I think he hits one of his own. Um, then Moose hits a spear, but Aries is able to grab the bottom rope. Aries gets up. He goes to leave the ring. He says, you know, screw this. I'm out of here. Um, Moose follows him onto the stage. Moose picks him up and throws him into the audience. Uh, Moose comes back, gets Aries back onto the, uh, the ramp because obviously he can't win by count out moose goes to i think a jump oh adam but he flies aries ducks he flies over the ropes into the ring aries knocks moose onto the ground aries hits a brain buster on the outside moose barely makes it into the ring before 10 aries at this point is fed up he goes to grab the title he goes in the ring but is it gets grabbed by granderson and uh, Aries is able to hit a brain buster, and he ends up retaining his title. So I know this was split. This, the crowd was half for Moose, half for Aries. It was. Uh, it seemed like it was going to go either way. It, no, neither man had a clear advantage throughout the match. It was booked really well, but I thought the better man won. Aries, I didn't think it was Moose's time yet, so I'm sure it will be later on this year. But Moose definitely proved that uh, he can go. So, like I said, guys, this was just a great pay-per-view. Um, if you haven't been able to catch it, uh, find a way to watch it. Um, if not, you're going to have to wait till it shows up on the GWN in probably a month or so. But great pay-per-view. Impact needed to hit it out of the park, and they did. Um, I'm excited to see where we go here. We have two nights of tapings ahead of us. And I will see you guys back for on Friday for my Impact review. Thanks for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.